Okay, earlier this year, Pure Foods Tasmania IPO'd, and that was despite the markets wading through the peak of the pandemic. Yesterday, the company released its first full year report to the market, recording a rise in revenue but a steep loss. To discuss the preliminary results and the company's outlook, of course, we're joined by Michael Cooper, MD of Pure Foods Tasmania, live via Skype. Michael, welcome back to Ausbiz. Thank you so much for keeping us abreast as to what's happening there. Um, shall we just start with the preliminary results that were put out? Um, so you had revenue rising, you've got sales rising as well. So where where was the real trouble when it came to this full year loss? Oh, I suppose um, we were only listed um, back in April, so only had uh, eight weeks of last financial year. Um, the loss was basically contributed to the, um, the high fees paying to listing expenses. Um, operating um, underlying um, EBITDA was 41 thousand um, positive versus a, uh, a loss last year of uh, 334,000. So I was pretty happy about what we achieved, excluding the uh, the listing expenses. So overall, great result, 13% up in revenue. Um, the entities themselves, like we own two operating entities, Tazpato and Woolwich Smokehouse. Uh, Tazpato was up 21%, um, EBITDA was up 80% <coughs> in, in the bottom line. So that was very successful. Woodbridge Smokehouse was relatively flat. We're doing a bit of restructure there, but it had a positive EBITDA of 22K. So overall, um, very, very positive and very happy with how the business is tracking. How are the, uh, the company's export uh, markets are faring at the moment? Particularly, is there any interest that you have in China at this stage? No, we don't. Our only relationship with China is we do supply into Hong Kong, but we don't supply anything directly into China. Our, um, our Hong Kong business is up about 18%. So, um, you know, it's very similar market in Hong Kong. It is to Australia. People are uh, shopping. Retails had uh, large growth. We're, we're very um, relevant in uh, UK, Sorry, in Hong Kong. We're actually in Park and Shop, uh, welcome and all the major retailers. Uh, we're not in food service, so we haven't been affected at all. Um, all our business itself is not real, um, geared towards food service whatsoever. So we've had the same growth, you know, in Australia as well, you know. Our July numbers were um, 13, 35% up with one entity and 60% up with the other entity on the same period a year ago. So overall, we're still seeing significantly strong demand for our products. Your products are obviously something we like to touch and taste and feel. However, you cannot look past uh, the trend to e-commerce and to shopping online. So how are you positioning Pure Foods to really leverage that thematic and, you know, sell online? Yeah, well, that's good. Um, we had, I'm not sure if you've got our latest uh, release, but we, um, we just launched a whole new online, online store under Pure Foods brand. Um, that store has been active now for about uh, two weeks. We've had about 100% growth on our existing online store, which was just under the Woodbridge brand. Um, the, um, the narrative there is to, we're going to have a hamper of products. So not only, not only the products that we produce and manufacture, we're obviously bringing other Tasmanian producers into our hamper as such. So the idea of that is that we'll get a strike rate, um, a very high strike rate, that if you can go onto our online store, you can get a large selection of, of Tasmanian produce. Um, we're starting with oysters very shortly which are pretty exciting. Um, obviously, plant-based cheese, which you would have seen by announcement, we're moving to that space as well. All these products, and the mandate is 100% Tasmanian raw material and produce. Michael, one thing I noticed in the uh, report that uh, you cut back on marketing expenses. I'm just wondering about what's happening with the customer pipeline there at the company. Oh, sorry, I didn't quite hear you say again. Just with the, uh, the customer pipeline at the moment, I saw that you cut back on marketing expenses. How are you planning to grow the company over the next year? Yeah, well, that was last financial year. We've actually just employed a full-time new marketing brand manager. So we've actually just invested about 400,000 marketing branding in the last eight weeks. Um, so that was uh, last year's financials that was reflecting to that, that uh, announcement. But we've actually re-employed and due after the raising, the business had some more capital. So we're investing very hard in our marketing and branding um, with a full-time resource, um, which has already shown its colors very quickly. And she's only, uh, Anita's only been with us for four weeks. All right. Well, um, I'm sure she'll be pleased to hear you mention that. Uh, when it comes to uh, expanding the, uh, the market for Pure Foods Tasmania, how have your dealings been with some of the major supermarkets, if any, here in Australia or, or across, you know, in the mainland, I suppose, so to speak? Um, you know, I know that you deal with IGA a lot. Is there any preference for where you will actually 
uh, like to expand your product range and its availability? No, not really. We're, um, we do all of the major retailers. We recently were successful as well by putting three new Pate SKUs into Woolworths into 850 stores nationally. That'll, that'll grow our group revenue by about 35% um, and uh, the Taz Pate revenue by over 45%. So we obviously deal with the IGA stores as well. We're just working on a distribution agreement to supply all the IGAs nationally. Um, we, d we deal with other major retailers as well. Um, also deal with major retailers in Singapore too. So a lot of interest um, out of Singapore of recent times. I think the Singapore potentially is the new Hong Kong um, and um, very positive response. Obviously the e-commerce business is, is very big in Asia. Um, we're just negotiating at the moment for, um, for two opportunities to go through e-commerce through Asia as well through a partnership. Um, so I hope we'll be able to announce that very shortly. But no, we'll deal with all the major retailers. Um, we've got a lot of demand for our project. Um, it's nice to be in a situation where retailers are ringing us, saying we'd like your product. I mean, Tasmania is uh, currently COVID-free, touch wood, um, but it's, it's believed to be a safe, clean, green environment, which it always is, and, and it's clearly shown that during COVID. And um, it's the best place in the world to, uh, to grow produce and produce food and beverages. So we're very lucky. So what's life been like as a listed company so far, Michael? <laughs> yeah, it's very different. I was in the private world for a long time. Um, you do it. There's a lot of um, investor calls, a lot of investor relations. Um, obviously, the uh, the governance is very high. So updating the market, whatever you do, I feel like I've got a tracker on me. So whatever I do, I have to um, sort of announce that to the market, which is fine. So, but it does give a lot of other opportunity because um, we can raise capital, which we've been successful so far. We've still got uh, north of four million dollars cash in the bank. Um, so we're actually generating positive cash as well. So we're not actually eating into that as yet. We are on a major program to um, do a major upgrade in the plant, which I've mentioned before. Um, we're investing in our sales and marketing. Uh, we're moving to Mill Solutions category, which is a billion dollar category alone in Australia. Um, so we'll have something quite unique and different in that category coming very shortly. Um, you know, so it's, it's very exciting. We're going to grow organically and through acquisition as well. Uh, Managing Director of Pure Foods Tasmania, thank you so much for your time this morning. Oh, thank you, Oz. Thanks for showing your interest. Thank you. Yeah, 